A very good welcome to everyone. It's episode 288 of Aussie Tech Eds. How are you all this week? I hope you are well. Uh, Aussie Tech Eds, every Thursday night, live.thesecrethub.com if you want to watch the live recording of the show. Uh, come into the lounge, spread your legs, get a, get a, a um, handful of fresh chewy tobacco and uh, pop it in and uh, sit around and, 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 and chew it with us. All right, uh, Skype, you can call in live on Skype. Skype is the Aussie Tech Eds is the Skype handle. Um, and audio only, Will, how are you going? <laughs> I thought I thought I just before I mentioned the radio is the radio back up and floating. Um, the live stream was while we were listening to tech webcast, but for some reason it's not. Okay, but it should be. Okay, then. But normally, normally it's radio uh, dot thesecrethub dot com. You can also get the paper. There's two editions daily: paper dot aussietechheads dot com dot au. And a big hello to everyone who's listening overseas. We've got some emails, and I'm going to read one out just in a minute. And uh, techwebcast.info, thank you for that. Where they re- let us replay the show at 7 o'clock before the show each Thursday night. Don't forget the footy tips. Perfect round last week for me. I'm on fire. Yeah. Eric, how are you going? Speaking of something. I've, that... I've got my legs spread, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> good, good. You, you've been watching uh, Paddy Newton again. <laughs> <laughs> No thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, what's been going on this week? Anything? Anything exciting with you two, or just the the norm? Oh, look, it's been a normal week for me. But there's, uh, it's been exciting, which in other respects, which we'll discuss at the next show. All right, and that's it. That's right. The next show, that being chewing the fat, right after Aussie Tech Eds, or if you're not listening or watching live, download it over the iTunes, the iTunes video or audio. And uh, Will, working hard? Oh, it's been flat out this week because the uh, weather's starting to cool down now, so all mm. the batteries are starting to fail. So it's like every battery in Brisbane has died at the same time. Oh, just as well you've got a time machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my TARDIS back there, I'll just go back and... Have you, so, been, called out to re- have you been called out to uh, replace the battery of a Tarago that belongs to the opposition? <laughs> No, unfortunately. Right. Because you wouldn't go out there, you'd let them wait. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'd go out there. But I just can't guarantee the battery would work. I'd, I'd, I'd be thinking that it's just a, it's a, it's uneconomical to go out. <laughs> There's not enough people in strife. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, all right. So where are we going to start tonight? We've got some stories. We'll bring you some the latest news that we think is relevant, the stories that we pick out, the three of us individually pick out and think that, hey, let's talk about those this week. So my first story, we'll start off now tonight at 9.30. So we better hurry up and get out of here because 9.30 ABC has a uh, Steve Jobs billion dollar hippie. So it must be some sort of a uh, bit of a doco there. Uh, brand- Is it a slag off? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. Total like billion dollar hippie. That's a little bit derogatory. But I, oh no. Well, he was a hippie. Wasn't he? Yeah, I know that, but he's dead. So what? Don't matter. Oh, God, too soon. Oh, it was too soon last time I made a joke. <laughs> <laughs> It'd never be too soon. It'd be, are you one of these Titanic? No, it's too soon. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, but I can do stuff like that. You can't. <laughs> All right. All right. So a, um, uh, yeah, so a man of contradictions, he fused a Californian counter culture attitude and a mastery of the art and of hype with explosive advances in computer technology insiders including steve wozniak tell extraordinary stories of the rise fall and rise again of apple with steve jobs at its helm there you go 9 30 tonight it is also repeated on uh tomorrow on the abc one as well at 2 p.m so that'd be 2 p.m actually tonight. if you go to abc iview you better download it right now Right. Yes, Probably, it is. Well, if not now, or probably I think just after the show's been aired. I, th- I had a look at that today, and I think it is actually there now. But anyway, you only have to wait another I'll, hour. I will download it right now. And you'll be looking, you should be watching us anyway, so turn the TV off. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> features <laughs> featuring uh, interviews with actor and Apple enthusiast Stephen Fry, worldwide web inventor Sir Thomas Berners Lee. Berners, and, Ber- Berners Lee, yes. And branding guru. Yeah. Sorry. You should know this stuff. You've you've ris- listened to his bio, I hope. Oh, I'm nearly I'm I'm waiting for I'll get the iPhone. Right. I can't I okay. can't do it, eh? I can't do it on my Android. I can't the do first, it. The first the very first web page 
was designed by Thomas Berners-Lee on a Next computer, which was his computer company that he's formed after he was sacked from Apple. So Best there you store. go. Yeah. So also including uh, um, Rita Clifton, a branding guru. Uh, so it looks at it uh, decodes the formula that took Apple from suburban garage to global supremacy. Ah, so there you go. So uh, look, I'm sure if you guys, uh, if you miss it, it'll be on all, all through, yeah, iView, as Eric said, so go and get it. It's on of you. It's not on yet. It's on. It's th- there's a trailer there, but that's it. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So that'll, that'll be tomorrow. Now speaking it'll of TV, tomorrow, tomorrow. Speaking of TVs, now I don't know if anyone can answer this question, but I'll tell you what. Uh, it is a poff. Good old poff. We've got a poff back, and I've got one tonight. My uh, TV, my plasma TV, four years old, had just decided to stop working. And uh, mm-hmm. brand, please. Panasonic. And oh, so that's what, interesting. That's not. A, that's unusual. Yeah. So what happens is uh, that it's it's sort of it's working except for there's no picture. It's got audio, and <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd yeah. say it's the power supply, which means it's not working. <laughs> the, the most a lot of especially older plasmas actually had um, dual power supplies. They for the, each circuit they had one for the audio circuit, one for the video circuit. Um, yeah. I know it was a problem with, um, I'm trying to think of the brand I used to have. So I think it was a Panasonic or a Toshiba. That was quite a common problem um, with their power supplies. They failed on okay. the video side. They just couldn't handle the load. Because it had been going on for a little they're while. They're supposed to do 20,000 hours, those things. The screen. Yeah. yeah. Well, the screen. So that's, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> like everything. So, you must have it on nonstop. No, no, it's not. No, no, the screen, the screen is still lighting up. You can see the black of the mm. screen light up. It's just that there's no, there's nothing on it. Um, like for a little while now, it's been when I was pl- using the media center, it had started to flicker, and it was like so a all look- the plasma's gone on it. Is that would that? Is that no, no, that'll just look? fade. It, it will. It is possible, and especially the brighter they are, the quicker the phosphorus will wear out. But um, it just gets duller and duller. But a total failure like that, I would probably. It's unusual. Have. Yeah, this one's as this is one's as bright as the bloody sun, and there's no drama with it. But uh, but um, yeah, so and it looked like for a little while it looked like what the media center lead or the input was loose, you know, and it would flicker in and out, flicker in and out like, and then it was also a bit you know scratchy colors would run a bit across the screen. Yeah, just yeah. it looked like that, and then now just nothing nothing comes up at all. So it's um just no good at all. But um anyway, but I, but the thing was. I went into, I, I rang up the repairman and all this sort of stuff. And uh, he said, oh, we've got to take it back to the workshop to get it fixed. And I said, well, okay, why? And he goes, oh, well, because that's what we do. And so anyway, they charge you $44 to come and get it, $44 to bring it back. And uh, then he said, well, we'll have a look at it. It, it costs you $60. And then the part yeah. could cost you like whatever it costs you. So, so it's $140 before you know what's wrong with it, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And then they said they just bait, and also just simply just said, "Listen, that's uh, just throw it, get another one, get another one." But there's not much yeah, wrong with it. That's that's the. That's my place did the same thing. Um, they basically said it's going to cost you, you know, 150 bucks or something. They went, "Okay, fine, look at it." You know, hardly been used. It was really it was like five years old, but it had been like less than a couple hundred hours used. Yeah, well, and um, that's my beef. It cost I me. Said, too, yep, too go and good. have a look at it, see what's wrong with it. So they had a look at it. They said, oh, we think it's the power supply. Went, what do you mean you think it's the power supply? Mm. Oh, well, we can't be certain until we replace it. Oh. Okay, well, replace it. Oh, it's $2,000. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not going to pay for it if it doesn't fix the problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently... You must get a new one. How much did you yeah. pay for that, Glenn? Well, yeah, well, it's only, like as I said, it's about four years old. It cost me two grand. So it was like 500 bucks a year. <laughs> for a TV, mm. it's um, oh, and you know, and, and you see all these other ones. Like my brother just bloody kicks his every fucking every. <laughs> sorry about that. Every oh. two minutes. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> every two minutes, and like it's still going. So it's a bit crazy. So, um, oh, oh, let me yeah. write that one down. Okay. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, so that's no good. That's no good. So they told me to get a new one. I rang. I spoke to another guy today who um. <laughs> Who uh, who takes his his junk to the dump, and he said to me, "Yeah, the the guy, you know, the guys at the dump, how they'll they'll uh, scavenge things, and they'll, yeah. they'll they'll take your rubbish and put it in their little shop and you know, resell it." 
Well, he said yeah, that the, for some <laughs> poor sucker. That's right. Well, he said um, he said the the dump guys aren't even picking them out of the rubbish anymore. He said they're just no. Yeah. You, you just get rid of them. You just can't sell them. Yeah. You can't sell them. But I thought the dearest part of these TVs was the the plasma screen or the LCD yeah, screen. Yeah, would be. But yeah, we can't do anything with it usually. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, you know what? I would, if if you can send it somewhere that they, you know they're going to recycle it properly or yeah. dump it safely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to put my foot through it. I hate oh, it. Do I'll, that. I mean... we'll, just, we'll just grab someone and throw them through it. <laughs> no, no I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll find out how to dispose of it correctly. Go down to Canberra, and I'll, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll dispose <laughs> of it. But uh, but all right. So um, anyway. So as I said, uh, we uh, a few emails this week. But uh, one that I thought I'd mention is from Leon. And now we were talking about the, the in-app purchases quite, or oh, maybe two episodes ago, two or three episodes ago, and uh, at, at, you know with Apple, Apple. Uh, App Store and everyone getting in the trouble with putting their password in, downloading something, downloading a game like I did today. I downloaded uh, what did I download today? Uh, Angry Birds Space, and <laughs> soon as, and soon as I downloaded it, yeah, I give it to the little bloke to play. And then uh, as soon as I did that, I thought, oh, in apps, I hope he doesn't buy nothing. <laughs> you know, all they do is click, click, click. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, so Leon, uh, he's had an experience as well with the in app purchases. Um, hi guys, I'm the I am from the UK. Big fan of the show, blah, blah, blah. Last week, I got my six-year-old daughter a free app called Modern Girl. The shock came when we saw in our statement a bill for £69.99 for a duffel bag of diamonds. Oh, what? I hear you say, is it a real bag? I don't think so. <laughs> it's a number on the screen, so a girl can have a good time. Anyway, we couldn't believe it, so we emailed Apple with a pleading tone to it because it happened within the 15 minute window given so no password come up i've been able to change it so that it locks immediately apple did refund us on this occasion but they won't but they won't do it again so a big relief good on you good on you learn happy and good on you apple that's a happy win-win happy story so um if you've got the emails send them glenn will or eric at aussietechheads.com.au all right i guess sort of speaking of the in-app payment thing the new uh google play of course but it brings with it um, the new video, like on-demand video uh, streaming, which, of course, is the same sort of thing. At some point, you've had to put your username and password into the system to mm. to get your things. And the problem is if your kid or somebody or a mate's playing with this now and they decide to watch a high-def rental for 24 hours, it could be up to $7 uh, just to rent a, a movie for a few hours. So... Mm, yeah. It's great that it's here now. You know, you can watch high def on your phone or on your media center, whatever you have. I, got it I set haven't up. tried on the iPad yet because I know YouTube. Um, if you if you access YouTube on an iPad, you, it directs you to the HTML5 website. Yep. The YouTube equivalent. So I'm I'm wondering. If, I'm assuming that that being the case, you should be able to watch the video on the iPad if they're encoded correctly. Yeah, they, yeah. you should. Be I, able I might to. I might try it. Watch a preview or something and see what happens. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, so yeah, you get the uh, the stupid part is, <clears throat> which Google has been weird lately. But one of the things they're doing is this great thing where you got videos from Disney and Sony Pictures and all these. Uh, you can hire them. You got thirty days to watch them. You know all that great. But if you have a rooted Android device, you can't download the app. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> well, wasn't there a... So, like, well, that's bizarre. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's you would think that this sort of this sort of thing is what people with a rooted device would be keen on doing because they're, that's, they're the ones who are in the know. That's your target audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, well, speaking of the... Uh, you remember the Optus decision? That, that was changed earlier this week. The, the Optus, um, you know, recording the, the footy and letting you play it, stream yes. it back with the, in the two minutes. Now, I did have the story here somewhere, actually. I, pu- I pulled that out. Now, the decision has been reversed. So here we go. The um, Optus has confirmed it will suspend its TV Now service uh, uh, following a federal court's decision to hold the telco liable for copyright infringement. Um Yeah, Fiona Phillips, Executive Director with the Australian Copyright Council, said a market-based approach to evolving cloud technologies could still overcome any potential copyright infringement issues with cloud service providers and right holders. She said service providers would have to ensure that business models for the future services included an ability to purchase the required licenses. 
So, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's all sort of going to go back up in the air again, I think. I think and they're, are they, they've got 20, what, 21 days to appeal from the date that came down. When did that come down? Yeah, it, it has 21 days uh, from the date uh, that that decision was made. Decision. And I think that was last yeah. Friday. So call that, mm. what about the... 14 days tomorrow and counting. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, so anyway, that's no good because I, I would have thought that, that was I was I'm not I don't think that's a, the right decision. I don't think Optus was doing anything wrong. I think where the the fell down was under the uh, Copyright Act, the, the the new amended Copyright Act with the uh, ha, where how you could uh, you are allowed to record something and then play it and watch it again later, and you are allowed to put it onto different devices. So you are allowed to do that for personal use. So I think what the court had trouble with was it wasn't personal use if a company was doing it. So the company, Optus, was uh, the company, right. and that wasn't right. a person. Right. And I think that's right. where maybe the, there's a bit of an issue. Well, well that, makes, that makes sense technically. Yes, it does, it does. But, uh, yeah, cause, yeah, but anyway, like, I don't know. We'll see how, see how it goes. I think Optus will... They'll probably appeal. Look, these this thing went through the US oh, look, courts. They just come out with a device. What they'll do is they'll just come out with a device. I'll just pay the. So you, if you save it on your device, regardless of what sort of device it is, whether it's at home or on the road, then yeah, they'll they'll pay the. Company's, the not, company's not doing it. You're the one doing it. Yeah, they'll pay the license fees. But as I mean, how many people? Well, how many <laughs> tens of people are going to watch a game of footy on a phone? You know, so especially if it's a Nokia <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. a BlackBerry. Or a BlackBerry. That's, That's right. right. Now, BlackBerry's been in the news this week. <laughs> oh, they're pathetic. They make me sick. <laughs> they're pathetic. Now, Which bit do you yes. want to talk about first? I've well, got a couple of stories on that too. All you right. Want to talk, all right. Well, there's, there's three people. There's probably three stories. <laughs> um, there's a BlackBerry, the announcement about version 10, which might yep. be the, 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 basically the last version of BlackBerry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's that stupid stunt they pulled out front of the Apple store. Yeah, so what you was heard about that, right? I no? oh, yeah, look, I... you're gonna love this. This is so pathetic. I'll I'll, I'll read it out to you. Um, during the week, there was all these people out the front, hundreds of them out the front of the Apple store in Sydney, with these big placards: "Wake up, wake up, wake up!" Black, you know, black on white signs. And then, then there was then there was a, a there was a YouTube video I think on it on Wake Up some viral ad right and they're all it was basically attacking Apple and you know as billboards started ha- coming out and all this sort of stuff and everyone thought oh, it must be Samsung because they're the ones <laughs> in um, you know really going after Apple with the with the lawsuits and their new phones about to re- release and all this sort of stuff it's BlackBerry. So I'll read, out, I'll, I'll read out what the story says. A stunt by BlackBerry maker, RIM, designed to make fun of Apple, has backfired on the ailing company. RIM today owned up to being responsible for an extended protest outside Apple's Sydney store last week after online sleuths traced the source of the publicity stunt. You know what happened? They registered a domain, wakeup.com, and they registered it not in a dummy company's name, in Research in Motion Canada. How hard it wouldn't be that hard to find out, you know. It's such this is why they're going broke because they're stupid. But what are they? The punch at, what are they? What's what, that? I just didn't understand what the hell it was all about. Let's it's a big stunt for their new BlackBerry 10 phone. If you go to the website, it's counting down 60 million seconds, mm. which is 60 days or something, right? Or five million seconds, which is 60 days, and that's when they're going to release BlackBerry 10, right? But, so it's a big stunt for everyone to wake up and buy their phone, basically, which obviously didn't work. No, that's not even. That's not even relevant. I don't even no. get it. Oh no, this is just pathetic. The punchline, which is the fact that BlackBerry is behind it, is what makes it fail because BlackBerry is not associated with any kind of success. This is what the story says. Yeah, I don't, I don't even if get they it. Had run, if anyway. they had run around this, if they had run this around the initial uptake of the iPhone 3GS a couple of years ago, it might have had some relevance. The company was forced to deny it paid bloggers to report on the stunt. Oh. And uh, what else? Bloggers were not paid for this campaign or told what to say. They said neither RIM or any agencies on RIM's behalf have ever paid. Blah 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 blah. Um, so it just it's just it's a so massive campaign to make everyone aware that it was BlackBerry. Like oh, I've got to buy the BlackBerry. Forget Apple. Don't worry about Apple. 
<laughs> so this was this was, this was held in out in Sydney and Melbourne, I think it was, wasn't it? Well, the one I'm reading about was they're commenting on the Sydney one. I don't. Maybe they maybe they did do a Melbourne one. I I wasn't aware of that. But yeah, but anyway, well, you know, like that they're talking about this new uh, BlackBerry Ten. So they handed out these BlackBerry Tens to certain people and uh, to you know media the demo. And said you know here try them out it'll be great. Um, well, you can't make phone calls. Uh, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. It won't use Flash. It doesn't support HTML5. Um, it, just, it was a useless piece of. <laughs> it was just a brick. You might as well have handed someone a 1994 Nokia. Well, so they hand they handed out two thousand dev- devices that didn't work. Um, <laughs> but they basically, yeah, basically they did. They didn't. They didn't work. Um, but what I find really funny was that. Part of that as well was that um, they did another. Uh, I'm just trying to find it here quickly. So, uh, press the wrong button. Hang on. They did another uh, article on how saying that uh, Rim is working on its is working on its security, and basically they want um, Apple because at the moment Apple is known. You know, it's just been. What are they called? Uh, certified for use in the yeah. government for yeah. secret, you know, private information and things. Yeah. And Rim saying no, they won't. We're launching this new fabulous iOS or this new BlackBerry ten yeah. thing, and it's. I think their statement was no. <laughs> their statement was something along the lines of, uh, "Yeah, there it is. Uh, Apple won't steal our, you know, government." clients or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Apple won't steal a government share. The government certified Apple OS for pr- protected level. Um, and the further on it says um, Totsky or whatever his name is, a new dude in charge of BlackBerry. Um, what's it say? I do think we'll be going to complete I do think we're going to compare pretty favorably to Apple products, not just from a security standpoint, but from a state from a feature set. With what iOS delivers today, between Playbook 2 and BlackBerry 10 goes, I think other than mass consumer marketing appeal, from an enterprise standpoint, you're going to get enterprise class manageable secure device. <laughs> yeah, but then they showed that they, they, they say all this stuff at the developers conference, the same thing that you probably read out there, and then they say, and we'll show you what we mean, here you have 2,000 phones that don't work. Exactly. You know, I'll say something like Google. I don't like Android devices. Everyone knows that. But they have their Google I.O. or their developers conference, and I think 2,000 people go to that, I think, or 3,000 people. And everybody gets an Android phone or Google Nexus or whatever it is that they're making at the time, and they work. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. they, and they work well. People come home from those things, and they think, oh, that's fantastic. It works. I can develop on it. I can start developing apps as soon as I get home and all this sort of stuff. What are these developers going to do with a brick phone? What's the yeah. point? And mm. then they wonder why there's no app market for BlackBerry. Wasn't well, there? It's a, no wonder because you're handing out phones that don't even make phone calls. Wasn't there? Wasn't there a, also a little article somewhere about uh, there's, they they want to have so many thousands apps by the end of the year or something? Uh, this is just going to go gangbusters. This this device. Oh look, look, <laughs> look! I understand a company talking up a product, but they've got to let the product do the talking, and and they've got to shut up. You have to deliver something. You can't just constantly talk. And the annoying part about BlackBerry, uh, people who have used BlackBerry for years, they call them CrackBerry for a reason because they... They are addicted to these people. You know, they used to work really well. But I don't know what's happened. I really don't know. Well, I do know what's happened. The smartphone, Android, iPhone have come yeah. in and eaten their lunch and they haven't kept up, you know, which is such a shame because they had 80% of the smartphone market. Yeah. Prior to Apple and Android. Now they've and got they, something like 20%. And they had virtually every government, every secure market. Yep. They, every they had massive covered. corporation they had. Yeah. All, the, all the big accounting firms, all the big banks, all the big government agencies, all BlackBerry. Now, you know th- 300 of the top 500 companies in America are using iPhones. You know where I think it started to go pear-shaped was when all that security breach happened over in... Iran or Israel or wherever it was that stored their emails, the BlackBerry emails. I think yeah. that was the sort of the turning point where people realised, well, hang on, maybe it's not as secure as people make it out to be. Yeah, they started outsourcing their um, their their um, their servers, their email servers, 
in, yeah. into Iran. Well done. Well, I've yeah. got I've got two words for BlackBerry. Wake up. Go on. <laughs> Wake, Wake up. up. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. The, the Wake two, up. The two co-CEOs have resigned and yeah. they've hired someone else, Trotsky or whatever his name is. And um, he, I don't, he, I don't think he, he's any better. No, well, he's worse because he actually cancelled the developers' conference and his reasoning was that he's not comfortable yet with the company and doesn't have any announcements. <laughs> and this yeah, is but, the then, big he, but then he gives out 2,000 phones that don't work. <laughs> lucky, not lucky! He cancelled the conference. Imagine how bad it could have been. Yeah. I would have thrown the phone back in his face. <laughs> Smashed. Well, anyone that's listening, and I know there's a few of you. We get, you know, Glenn gets a hell of a lot of downloads per week on this show all over the world. And we, we, and I, I can't speak to the other two, but I have one recommendation. I don't care if you don't buy an iPhone. I don't care if you don't buy an Android. But you know what? Don't buy a BlackBerry. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, wake up, phone. Wake up. Let's back. Wake up. Or a Symbian. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, let's. let's I want let's to pick on. the carcass of BlackBerry in about twelve months. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm surprised it's still moving. I thought rigor mortis would have set in by now, but oh, uh, look, I think it's on its last. I think it's in. It's in the winter of its life. Let's put it that well, way. <laughs> they just lost one billion dollars in revenue in the last quarter. So that's, that's every bad. quarter. They're losing. They're losing twenty percent a quarter. Yeah. Well, how do they keep going? How do they, they must have had a. They keep few... firing people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, oh, look, they're not going to be around for long. And then there was a rumor a couple of weeks ago that they were actually looking for someone to buy them. And it was a rumor that Microsoft were going to buy them. Mm. Well, I said, yeah, good. Yeah, but... might buy them, Microsoft. That's good. You do but that. Nokia, they might. Nokia, well, somebody had that rumor 12 months ago, 18 months ago, with Nokia, saying yeah. that Nokia was looking for a new software development partner. So, Well, that was know. Microsoft, yeah. In the end, it well, was look Microsoft. At uh, was it Compaq? Um, no, was oh, was it Compaq or HP? You used to do the other PDAs, the Palm Pilots and stuff. Yeah, Compaq made the the iPad. Yeah, and that all got bought out by somebody H- else to use. Yeah, oh, look, they just bury it. They, the reason no one's made an offer to buy RIM is because they're thinking, what the hell am I going to do with it? Yeah, <laughs> well, right. I'm going to buy what spend you know ten billion dollars on this company. What am I inher- What am I getting? I'm inheriting a bunch of a bunch of dubbos who don't know what they're doing and a crap product, and bunch they won't of, listen. Yeah, bunch of they don't listen to anybody. That's why they're going down the toilet because they think they do it better than everybody else. And yeah. so I think everyone's going. No, I'm not touching that. It'd be cheaper for me to start my own. It'd be cheaper for someone to actually start their own phone company mm. like AT and T, and have you know put up their own towers than to buy a BlackBerry and go broke. But I'll tell you, this shows. It'd be interesting. It just shows you, like, just as um, like how much, how much, how good of a marketeer that Jobs he was, isn't it? Like now, you know, Barack Obama was walking around with a BlackBerry every day. He was on the phone, you know, on the cameras, on the press. Yeah. And then uh, what Jobs he gave him the prototype of what the, the whatever version it was, the three, did he or the four? Yeah, the three. Was it? Yeah. He goes, yeah, here, Barack, here's a here's a three for you. It hasn't hasn't been released yet. Here you go, try yeah. and use that. And uh, <laughs> he used it. He ran with it. And, they're, and yeah. now they're all. No, I remember them. when he got invited to the White House, he gave him an iPad for a gift. Mm. Yeah. Well, that Before might have been the one I He did about. the same thing. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So iPads are being used all throughout the US government now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's right. But anyway, let's uh, let's move on to that. And let's. Well, while we're talking about Jobsy, we might as well talk about Apple. Um, now, this one here looks like this, uh, Symantec have said that that flashback virus that mm. uh, got hold of the, the Max. Ten thousand dollars a day that it was earning the, the the uh, authors of the virus. Now, now this was this is quite a little interesting little piece because you'd be thinking to yourself, as I was, how do these guys make money out of this? You yeah, know? Well, how I, do they I make don't know money? How do they make money? But apparently, this Just one ad clicks or something. Yeah, well, this the flashback contained an ad clicking component that allowed the the attacker to generate revenue. So Mantec now believes making money from the Trojan was the flashback creator's end goal. Oh, obviously, the Trojan effecti- effectively hijacked advertising clicks that were intended for Google. Oh, so Symantec showed an example where an ad click, click worth eight cents was hijacked by flashback. This ultimately results in lost revenue for Google and untold sums of money for the flashback gang. So there you go. But, um, well, the worst part about that they don't actually bother to mention in that article. I mean, okay, Google loses eight cents, but the thing is, some advertisers just paid eight cents to a bot. Yeah, correct. You know, yeah, that, that's the worst part is is the companies that got hit by this. So if, 
I mean, that guy might have walked away with ten thousand dollars a day, but some company somewhere has been losing ten thousand dollars. That's day. right. Or yeah, or or a host of companies altogether have lost ten thousand. Yeah. It's a zero sum game. For every dollar that goes over here, a dollar's got to come from here. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. But you know what? I don't doubt this happened, and I'm, I hope they fixed it. I haven't seen any updates lately. I don't. Yeah, doubt it was this actually a uh, Microsoft Office vulnerability. What? That it was some one of the components in that. I was listening to Security Now. Or, I think oh, was, Steve Gibson! Saying, oh, the world's coming to an end. <laughs> but he was saying Turn that there was a von, there was a vulnerability in an Office component. Right. It was, something. and that caused the flashback thing. Well, that, that allowed it to to progress. So it yeah. wasn't an Apple say problem. It was caused by Microsoft. No, no, it was an Apple problem because the vulnerability only occurred in in, in, in the Mac, uh, yeah. but it came yeah, through the, the office. Mac. But yeah, anyway, what I was saying, I don't doubt this happened, and it shouldn't have happened. But you know, it was bound to happen eventually. But my problem is, is that I don't, I get very cynical when antivirus firms start writing articles about mm. oh, this virus, you better up, you know what I mean? Because I, sometimes I get cynical that they're trying to just sell their virus products. Probably. They, uh, you look, know, I have no doubt that this happened. But, you know, Symantec are losing money hand over fist as well. They're, they're the mm. rim of the antivirus brigade. Well, they're well known um, for their bloatiness, aren't they? They're, they're, they're antivirus well, everyone's going, well, because everyone's just downloading the Microsoft's free one now. Which is just as as good as anything. Just as good security essentials, and it and it captures yeah. everything. Between yeah. security essentials and AVG, and AVG, you got yeah. it covered. So they're just you know oh and look I'll show you how it works. You know at the end of the day and look I'm sure this happened, but at the end of the day how do we know that they didn't write some code at the end on the as part of the demo to show someone yeah. that look this oh, is how it happened. Yeah, but look look. Oh, I would have to to show you how it worked. They would have rewritten it to actually it shout, just show you. Uh, and I think that Symantec now are selling Microsoft, uh, sorry, um, Mac virus software protection, blah, blah, blah. Could you imagine? You get a brand new MacBook Pro i7 that screen, with 8 gig of RAM that screams, and you invo- in- install that crap on it, and suddenly it's running a lower like Pentium 1. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's another one by Kapers- Kapersky, or however you say it, saying that Apple is 10 years behind Microsoft in terms of security. Yeah, and um, if you buy our product, you can get yourself up to date. Yeah, the, well, it's not even that. The article's really badly written. It basically says, you know, there's all these vulnerabilities that over the last 10 years, Microsoft has fixed with updates, patches, things like that, and Apple hasn't. But the thing is, because Microsoft's been leading effectively the market for the last 10 years, they've had to do that. The thing mm-hmm. is now Apple's not really playing catch-up because Microsoft's been there and done that, so Apple know how to handle it. So... Yeah. Even though I understand what he's saying is that the way their security is handled is 10 years behind Microsoft. The thing is, it's only a six-month learning curve now, not 10 years. Yes. Yeah, that's so, right. Correct. But I think, uh, look, it's gonna be, do you think, Eric, that it's going to be soon that you're going to have to put antivirus on your Mac? No. No? You, Never going to do it. Yeah. Never yeah. going to do it. No. Not yeah. I think it's good practice for everybody to have it on every system. You know what I, I, mean, I re- you know what I reckon to do? Apple will come out with their own version of security like yeah. Microsoft has and it'll yeah. be non bloaty and non intrusive and it won't affect your system. I'll use that. I'm yeah, not yeah. using anything from Symantec yeah. or f- McAfee. Oh my oh, god. No, I don't use any of those. Oh what or a Norton. piece of garbage that is. And again, Norton. listeners, Norton's crap. <laughs> listeners all around the world, don't touch McAfee. Mm. Please. Mm. Get rid of it. AVG or Microsoft Security Essentials if you're running Windows 7. Get rid of Symantec. Not anything run by Symantec, Norton. Uh, Kapersky is garbage. McAfee is garbage. There's only two things you should use, AVG or Security Essentials. Or, yeah. or uh, Avast. Look, Security Essentials is what That's I use. Too. And look, I, 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 don't, I don't go with any dodgy mm. sites. Uh, sometimes, you know, the Google search turns red and goes, ooh, get me out of here. But uh, look, right. I, I run these things and not once in three, four years, since I, well, three years since I started running the Security Essentials, has have I ever had a virus. Never never yeah. even... I and, run... and it cost a fortune to run Symantec. I got, oh, how many, oh. I had five PCs in here, in you know, the kids and me, the wife, this before we all went max. And it's costing me $90 per year per machine. 
Mm. I'm not paying 400 bucks a year. Forget it. Yeah, no, that's wrong. I mean, I run um, Advast as well as Microsoft Security Essentials, and I've had one occasion where Advast has actually given me a heads up before, like a good before 10 minutes before yeah. before Microsoft found it. So by the time Microsoft found it, it would have actually been infected. So other than that, you're right. It, it's, it's every bit as good. And obviously being designed by Microsoft, it incorporates, you know. Well, they, they've, they've got the history. You know, they've got the, 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 the um, what do you call it? They've got the, uh, you know, what do you mean? The, the genetic makeup to know what prog- yeah. virus program to write for their own software. And I'm, yeah. sure, I'm surprised they didn't do it any sooner, to tell you the truth. Now, just moving along, we'll get a few of these little Apple stories out because I, I had a couple. Dr. Doss. <laughs> Dr. Doss. You know, it was no, never. There was a doctor. Um, oh, they used to have it in Windows 3.1. There was a. Yeah, doctor there was a doctor. Something. But it was never called. It was never. <laughs> it was, wasn't supposed to be called Dr. Doss. It was supposed to be Dr. Doss. Yeah, it was a Doctor Doss. That came as that came like uh, the Doctor Spock. You know, it wasn't supposed to be. Dr. Doss is dirty, rotten disk operating system. <laughs> oh, look, nothing wrong with a good old Doss. That was all right. Oh, could you imagine that? Doss five in the back in the in the background and three point one over the top. Beautiful. Oh, look, I, I start... Doss six point two two came out. It was the Woo-hoo. best thing ever. Yeah, look, I started with Doss three point three, and and maybe. 3.2 if I was... Yes. If I, was like, I started with DOS 3. Yeah, DOS 3. Hmm. But you know yeah. what was the best Windows operating system prior to Windows 7? The best? OS Windows, two th- Windows 2000. <laughs> oh, in I my opinion. I got into 2000. I, I, just, I just found it was great for business because it incorporated everything in business need. But for a home user, I always struggled with it. Oh, well, oh I didn't mind it. I didn't you, mind you, it. you loved ME. Don't, don't lie. ME and Windows <laughs> 98, piece of pus that was. And 95 not version uh, C, version 1, sub version D. No, no, yeah. you had to get 95A <laughs> so you could put plus on it because 95C <laughs> came right. with plus. Oh, God, how much money <laughs> they make everyone buying the plus pack and all it was was a, was a couple of bloody, you know, desktop <laughs> bloody pictures. But what about when you bought oh. the original 95? It had still had to come with a floppy disk to load the CD driver. How long <laughs> did it take... To install Windows 95, it came with 12 floppy disks. Oh, I, look, yeah, I, I got the the, uh, the upgrade pack from Windows 3.11 to Windows 95. It was 12 floppy disks, as you're right. Um, and it was. And if the boot disk, this one didn't work, you were screwed. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is you couldn't copy them because they were two meg yep. formatted yep. disks. Yeah, um, couldn't copy them. Um, Dirty right. Well, you could if you could buy those disks. Yeah, um, no I think it used to take me about 45 minutes to install it. Oh, it used to take me longer than that. And you know what, the worst thing about it? That sound when it was reading that, that floppy disk. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking, oh, jeez. Oh, you love that. The, well, the, the, the Amiga 500s are the best for that, but the thing is they'll actually read the disk. They won't just make that noise for the hell of it. <laughs> well, Milo's just written in the chat room, I can't remember what floppies look like. My answer to you, Milo, look down. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> it's in Tasmania. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, Apple introduces, uh, does, or is Apple introducing gifting in iTunes purchases via NFC or near field communication? Now, there's been. Um, on April 26, 2012, there's all, you know, obviously rumours, rumours, rumours about uh, what Apple's doing here and there. The iPhone, what's supposed to be coming out and then it's not supposed to be coming out in June and all these sort of things. So it's all it's all a bit of a hoopla. But uh, oh, I'm, I'm still guessing September. Yep. But anyway, this is, uh, this is, this is Apple with their near, n- NFC, Near Field Communication. They've, uh, th- th- they've published a patent application which shows gifting iTunes purchases via NFC or email. Apple's uh, patent generally relates to digital media content and electronic devices being configured to transfer information from one user's account to another user's account. Apple will uh, will allow users to share iTunes playlists, though at a cost being that it's in context with gifting, as Apple calls it. So there mm. we go. Rumours, rumours, rumours. You're um, not going to believe this, but I actually have an Apple story. Oh. <laughs> what a positive You're not Apple like story! It, it must oh, be no. a derogatory one. Yeah, that's what oh yeah, like. it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Apple spit it out. Wants, spit Apple it out. Wants Get it off Samsung's, your system. <laughs> Apple wants Samsung's logos removed at their trial. 
Apple so basically Samsung's want Samsung's logo. What? Yep. And so basically, you know how they're suing Samsung left, right, and center at the what moment. What is Samsung's logo? No one even knows what Samsung's logo is. Samsung. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Apple it's just a word. It's not want... even a logo. <laughs> Apple doesn't want the jurors to see Samsung's logo on court video equipment, um, <laughs> just in case it's fa- look seen to be favouring Samsung. They also, in one of their many requests, uh, they also want a ban on any statements attributed to Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson, author of the recent biography. Um, Well, that can't be admitted. Uh, That's fair enough. You can't admit extracts from a book as evidence. That's ridiculous. Well, it's a biography, so theoretically, I guess... It doesn't matter. It's It's still hearsay. Unless the person said it directly to you, it's hearsay. They want it... uh, They want it... Yeah, Apple clearly doesn't want to hear... Jobs comments about destroying Android because it was a stolen product. Um, and Which Apple doesn't want any any reference to Foxconn or working conditions in China. <laughs> I bet it doesn't. <laughs> um, and apparently there's there's a heap heap of other there's a laundry list of, of requests apparently. So I reckon Apple should just play if the, if Samsung want to have stuff on their <laughs> monitors has got the word Samsung, Apple should go, that's fine. We'll just have a big Apple at the front of the court. <laughs> Let's yeah, look, there are Apple stores, a massive big Apple hung hung by a crane out the front of the courthouse. Yeah. A, a, a you know, that's just stupid. It just, you know, it's not a bit. If if they've got a case, it's not going to matter what the jurors can see or can't see. No, yeah, the Apple, the you Apple. Know, look, I like Apple stuff, and I reckon Samsung going to lose this case, but that's beside the point. I'm still not going to stick up for Apple's stupid, that is stupid request to I can't have this and I can't have that. Yeah, yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. Yeah, the, the Apple lawyers, they'll sit there eating apples. That's how ridiculous That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they take one bite no, of it on. and just leave it wouldn't, on the desk. Wouldn't the Samsung <laughs> lawyers sit there eating apples? <laughs> no, but see, then but, if you eat and if you have one bite of an apple put on your desk facing the jurors, it looks like the Apple symbol. Yeah. Well, that's what Forrest Gump did, wasn't it? I now, Apple... Had shares in some fruit company somewhere. Now, <laughs> Chomp. Remember Chomp? has the uh, developed by two Australians that... That Apple bought out in February for about fifty million dollars. Uh, no longer searches Android apps. Android users, the app began reporting last Thursday that Chomp no longer works on Android devices. Well, that's sad, <laughs> well, isn't it? Know, that's fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I got no problems with that. They bought it. They can do what they want with it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. And speaking yes. of um, Australian things, Google Drive was developed in Sydney. Oh, um, interesting. No wonder it's so shit. <laughs> Yeah, it was developed um, by the Google offices in Sydney as, as a 20% project. Oh, that's why they didn't um, report a profit because they were spending all their money developing <laughs> this drive. <laughs> and they're also behind the social commenting um, on Google Drive and the whole social aspect of that as well. So oh, That would have been the, the, those twins that worked that did Google Wave, which, oh, which the, crashed um, and burnt. Yeah, the Wave. <laughs> I can't remember the name of those twins now. Yeah, that, 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 that was all. The Wave was okay, Google, but... So should I, should I Google, 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 um, Google... Just Google who invented Google Wave. The Bobsy Google Twins. They were based in Sydney. <laughs> Jedwood. So a couple of Finnish boys. <laughs> Jed, Jedwood. Now, while, while Will's Googling uh, that, I can tell you that Google <laughs> is not in the habit of making uh, profits in Australia. Google doesn't like profits in Australia. Uh, well, Google... And, you know, ask, look, let's ask ourselves the question, I wonder why. Google... <laughs> Although Google has uh, has made an estimated nine hundred and forty million dollars in web search advertising revenue generated locally, it has paid no tax, zero. Not a bad thing. Instead, uh, it routes its online ad sales through an Irish subsidiary, Google Ireland. This, That's right. This week, because Ireland is a five percent tax rate. Is that right? Yes. Well, that's why they're doing it, isn't it? This week, Google Australia reported a net loss of $3.9 million on operating Beautiful. revenue of $201 million for the year end of December to the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. Tax authorities yep. don't get a look at income generated within Australia by its search advertising business, which is booked offshore through the Irish entity. In turn, Google yep. Ireland is... Ireland is managed... Ireland, Ireland. Oh, to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> it is managed from Bermuda... Oh, it's true. No wonder stuff disappears. No wonder the profits are disappearing. <laughs> Google there's, your, there's your triangle right there. That's right. Uh, Google Australia continues the loss-making trend in 2010, reported a net loss of $3.1 million, 
Um, uh, in 2009, it incurred a net loss of 4.4 million, and in 2008, a net loss of 8.8 .8 million. So uh, they don't. Yeah. They, they they don't made a profit in Australia. I was going to say you can't half tell that's intentional, though. I mean, imagine the tax write-offs. Mm. <laughs> well, apparently, well, of course, it's, it's intentional, but it's legal. Yeah, yeah. it's what doing is completely above board. It, it shouldn't be. I think. It, I think it's something needs to be done about that. It's no, don't be a don't be a communist. <laughs> It's preference. I have to start calling you Julia Gillard. <laughs> you have to dye your hair red. No, but if, if Australians are spending money, Jerry Harvey for a service, why why shouldn't no. why shouldn't no, some they're of the not the thing? It's about intellectual property. Who owns the Google AdWords intellectual property? It's owned by Ireland, so you've got to pay it to Ireland. Hmm. Certain amount stays here, hmm. and the the rest of it, royalties, patent fees, software license fees, goes to who who, who owns the software, and it's owned in Ireland. It's, Apple does the same thing. Its preference for channeling, channeling income through low-tax nations has attracted examination of the U.S. Internal Revenue Service. A Google spokesman yesterday said on its Good luck with that. On its tax situation, Google complies fully with all relevant tax rules in all countries in which it operates, including Australia. So that, that's, that's right. Good. And look, if the tax rates in Australia weren't so stupidly high and prohibitive, they'd probably go, you know what? We don't mind keeping the money here. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I mean, look at Amazon when they did their Amazon partner thing. They pulled a heap of warehouses because suddenly all these um, they changed legislation saying that because you have a warehouse, that gives you a physical presence, yeah. and you're gonna have to start paying regardless of where the items are being that's sold. That's right. You have to start paying your state federal your state income taxes. That's right. Well, was, yeah, but it became more than one because suddenly it came from. Where the warehouse was, they had to pay a tax, but then they also had to pay a tax to where the items were going to. So that suddenly they're paying two lots of tax. And Amazon, oh, well, we'll just pull our warehouses out. That's not a problem. Yeah, so we'll just put them in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's what happens when you and get then, greedy. Yep. All right. People don't mind paying tax. It's when you're ta taxing and taxing and taxing and taxing, people are going, you know what? I'm out of here. Yeah. Yep. yep. Now, uh, look, it's time, it's time to move on. We go for, while we're talking about uh, Apple and all, all things Apples and stuff, let's hear from Garth. Garth's back again. He's got another little review. Now, when I can find it, uh, we'll, we'll see what he's got for us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, Garth, uh, hello. Where'd you go? Hello, where are you? Here he is. I found him. <laughs> okay. Here he goes. Take it away, Garth. All right. Glenn and Garth back again. Korg, Garth. Korg. What, what, what the hell is Korg? What the hell is Korg, you ask me? I do. Any of, you music, any of the musicians out there will know who Korg are. They are a, um, well, they are a uh, synthesizer manufacturer for years and years, one of the industry leading. Um, for a few years now, they've had, a, they've had these little chaos devices, which are basically little touchscreen um, chaos oscillators, they're called. This right. is basically brings that technology to your iPhone. Right. So, a bit hard to describe. Um, so normally, so could you describe it as it was, it, uh, say, ordinarily, it's a little hardware device. where you It's a little hardware device, Where you yeah. poke it. You touch the screen. So left to right is like a scale, so right. like playing the piano. Yep. So that's your, your x-axis, and your y-axis might give you different intonations or different, so, um, different effects on that sound. Right. So by touching the screen, you can have it, you know, it's, oh, it's got about 150 different sounds, I think. Yeah, From right. different bass sounds, different drum loops. Yep. Yeah, um, 150 diverse built-in sounds. Yep. Uh, play sounds by simply stroking, tapping, or rubbing <laughs> the screen with Glenn, your finger. Glenn, Glenn. Oh, I know, settle down. Yeah, I know, but it is pretty <laughs> exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can, and this, so on the, um, on the iPhone, the Ico, Ico Oscillator, um, it gives you five tracks, so you can record independent song, you know, independent loops on those five tracks. Yep. Um, there's a whole range of different scale settings. Um, you have different sounds for each track, obviously. Um, you can do the mix down. You can export it to SoundCloud. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. It's with a lot it. of stuff. It's basically another another you know music creation yeah. app. Now look, it's probably not the cheapest one we've seen. It's probably the most the most expensive one. It is probably it is in fact the most expensive one we've seen. <laughs> I picked it up for when it was on sale for a while when they first released it about ten bucks or when they did a last update. Right. But it's back up to around twenty bucks now. So it is. Yeah. But it is a professional grade you know app. It's not just your. But look, you tinker longer. 
piano yeah. have a play along. It's a it's a really great. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that you can have um like instead of the little hardware device that's that's been morphed onto the the iOS system and look you you can make your own little sounds and just export them up to the cloud or export them <coughs> on your computer and you can have like your own little sound effects and yeah. and loops and all that yeah. sort of stuff. It's it's pretty pretty fantastic actually. These devices when they were out were worth a lot of money, you know. Yeah. 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 So uh yeah, so Korg. So go and get your 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 fingers around that one. Look at this. There's there's a little picture of someone swiping. Cool. <laughs> we should have had a little demo. We should have. Maybe maybe we can uh We can add something in maybe there. We can add a demo in yeah. and uh Garth will send it to me and we'll we'll play it on the show sometime. All right, thanks Garth. All That's righty. Korg. Uh we'll see you next time. Good night, Jeez, guys. Good Yes, now, um, welcome back. Thanks, Garth. Now, look, if we're, if we're lucky, uh, Garth did send me a, a an example of what he has done with Korg, just a little loop. Now, geez, I've got to um, got to remember what I've done with that now. I should be able to find it. Let's have a quick look here in this little folder. Do we have it in here? And here it is, right here. So let's see if we can listen to this. This is what Garth did with the uh, IK oscillator. Maybe. Sounds like a bad porn soundtrack. <laughs> and we might just move this on a bit. That's not bad. That's good. Yeah, so that's all right. So, yeah, good one, Garth. Good work. And we'll see you again soon. All right. Now, what else have we got going on here tonight? Jeez, we're, we're, we've bloody been talking for a while. I think, Eric, you've got a, you've got a quick little audible oh. AA, Captain. Well, before that, I've just got one quick story. And yes. I've got, I'm in costume. Yes. So you've got to put me on camera. <laughs> you are. British ISP is forced to block the Pirate Bay. Ha <laughs> <laughs> British High Court has ordered the country's internet service providers to block the file sharing website, the Pirate Bay. A High Court judge told Sky uh, everything everywhere, Talk Talk, O2 and Virgin Media to prevent access to the Swedish site, which helps millions of people download copyrighted music, movie, movies and computer games. Music industry group BPI welcomed the order by Justice Richard Arnold, that the service providers block the site within the next few weeks. There you go. People are. So it's going to be on the. It's going to be on the uh, black internet now. People are increasingly turning to VPNs to anomalise their free file sharing, and uh, that's the that's the problem. Sweden's Lund University indicated there had been a forty percent rise in the number of fifteen to twenty five year olds using such a service since two thousand and nine. Uh, the Pirate Bay has advised visitors to make use of VPNs, which is probably a little deterrent as they normally cost, what, $8 a month? Something like no, that? Not even. Not even. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, blah, blah, blah. The music industry has, has music industry has changed its focus over the last year away from targeting individual file sharers to shutting off access to sites, as Eric was saying, uh, domain name service blocking. To achieve this, content providers must come up to an agreement with internet service providers to block access or force the block via the courts crack down against the Pirate Bay have been enforced, yeah, across Europe and uh, imminent in Britain. Okay. All right. N- another bad idea. Optus Vodafone to build 500 joint sites. Mm. So now they'll be just as bad as each other. <laughs> yeah. All those mobile there. carriers Optus and Vodafone have joined forces to fill mobile coverage black spots in metropolitan areas and strengthen their respective networks. The joint venture will see the carriers share some of their existing mobile towers while also bearing the cost of building 500 new sites over four years in capital cities. Yeah, look, they just mm. need to pull their finger out. I'm, look, I, I'm cured, eh? I, I'm cured. I will not go anywhere near Vodafone and Optus ever again. I'm cured. With, with regards to mobile phones. Yep, I'm cured. Are you cured, Will? Yeah, I mean, it depends on where you are because I've, I've got... Uh, Far North in, Queensland, Optus is fine. Well, I've got family in, in Lismore and Kyogle and Casino around through there. And Optus and Vodafone, for the most part, have superior signal and internet speed over Telstra. Mm. Yeah, I think in their regional areas, they're not too bad. But if you're in the city, forget it. Yeah, oh yeah. 
Yeah. All right, so let's mm. move on. So let's have a listen to, I think Eric, he's listening to Audible. He's a diligent Audible listener. And uh, audible.com, you can sign up for a free Audible book and join the Audible experience. Uh, join up from our webpage, hit it by hitting the link. And, um, yeah. You can help us out. Help us out with some funds for some hosting and whatever else it does, you know, power, coffee. Power. Whatever. Cookies, beer, whatever. Exactly, whatever. Because we're right. doing it for free. I, so we might I'll have... share this screen. Um, screen share. Uh, where are we? Okay. Um, my book is called American Conspiracies, Lies, Lies, and More Dirty Lies That the Government tells in this explosive account of wrongful acts and ongoing cover-ups jesse ventura takes a sim synth symptomat systematic look at the gap between the wide gap between what the american government knows and what it reveals to the american people the summary will be on um, the show notes of that on there and uh, in the meanwhile i will just play this do, 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 do. jesse ventura Take it away. Jessica. When I, in turn, went into the service and learned a whole lot Is more that coming about through? Vietnam, yes. I had the good fortune to come home and tell my father that he was right. Especially growing up in the Midwest, you never even contemplate that your government might not be telling the truth. You don't realize until you get much older that government is nothing but people, and people lie, especially where money and power are concerned. The next prong in the fork was when I got out of the Navy and went to junior college one year. Mark Lane came to give a talk, and I happened to hear him that night. That was the first time I ever paid attention to someone saying that what they told us about President Kennedy's assassination might not be true. I had been in junior high school when JFK was shot, and I remember the announcement over the loudspeakers being sent back to our home rooms and then school was dismissed. Like most everybody else, I saw Jack Ruby shoot Lee Harvey Oswald on TV, but I never questioned the Warren Commission's report that this disaffected ex-Marine had acted alone. After hearing Mark Lane that year, I was at the height of my wrestling career during the 1978 congressional hearings into the assassination and didn't really start delving into any of this until wrestling changed in the mid-1980s. All of a sudden, I was no longer driving to towns, but flying. Sitting on airplanes all the time becomes extremely boring. So I started reading. There you go. There you go, Jesse Ventura. Ooh. Legend. All right. So thanks for that, Eric. Now, uh, if you want to get that book for free and you haven't already joined and taken advantage of the free book offer, aussietechheads.com.au. Click on the Audible link. You'll see it. It stands out like the proverbial. Click on it and join up by that. And then uh, join with uh, cheap, very cheap Audible books every month after that. And um, get yourself... So I, look, I've I, I told you the other week, I've got one to review when I finish listening to it. And You mean low cost, not cheap. <laughs> yeah, well, dep it depends on what uh, your the first very, one. Very the first one is free. <laughs> yes, they're and, very good uh, quality, but they're not cheap. And um, yes, there you go. Thank you, thank you, Will. I know what you're saying. Good one. Yeah, yep. <laughs> inexpensive, but not cheap. And in case you're wondering, too, Jesse Ventura, who uh, read that book, um, was actually a wrestler in the WWE for uh, for quite a few years between 1975 and 1986. So That's right. right, and he joined the uh, I don't it was the Congress or the Parliament in the U.S. quite successfully, and um, he's quite a well-respected uh, parliamentarian. Mm. Yeah, he was uh, ninety-nine. He joined the Ref the Reform Party, and then he went to the Independence Party of Minnesota, and now he's just an independent. What was his um, his his wrestling call? What, what was his uh, you know Jesse something Jesse the Jesse the, the body. Ventura. Jesse the, the body. body Ventura. Yeah. Oh, the body, was it? Jesse the yeah. body Ventura. Jesse the yeah. L. McPherson Ventura. <laughs> uh, born as, uh, born, born James George Janos. That's it. July, <laughs> July 15, 1951. So let, let's have a look what the, can we see what the body looks like now? We'll have a go. What it looks like now. There he goes. That's there's, it. There's the body. Just That's a little, not him. Just a yeah, little one. Is that him? The oh, 38th like, governor of Minnesota. He looks 
terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't the body anymore. Oh, so Jesse. Jesse. Jesse, my man. Now, you don't, like, be, you don't want to be Jesse's girl, do you? <laughs> no way, no way. Now, let's let's get moving on. I've got a couple more stories before we uh, before we go because we have oh we're running late again. I know last week was a big big show, so we're going to try and keep the time this week. Now, another little story we've got here is that uh, Microsoft oh, Motorola wins Xbox and Windows Seven ban in Germany. Can you believe it? The sales ban. What? The sales ban covers the Xbox 360 game console, Windows 7 system software, Internet Explorer, and Windows Media Player. So it follows a ruling that Microsoft has infringed two patents necessary to offer this H.264 video coding and playback. So a U.S. court has banned Motorola from enforcing the action, enforcing the action until it considers the matter again next week. So there you go. Well, H.264 is. It is a licensed software, like it's not freeware. So it's possible they just didn't get the licensing for it. Well, they, well, they must have. I think it's. Oh, free. Microsoft, would, Microsoft just, would never steal. The oh. actual software, it's H.264, I think, is free to use, but you need to permission to use the license. I think at the user end, like you and I will, and if you like, if we do a, a coding yeah. and playback, it's free, but if you're commercial like Microsoft, I think you do have to pay for it. Yeah. MP, MPEG-4 comes under the same, I think, comes under the same jurisdiction. Well, MP3 is too. Yeah. MP3 is same, a yeah. licensed codec. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyway, yeah, the big corporations pay it so that their users, you, me, you know, Apple, Microsoft, can, yeah. you know, you can play this, you can play this stuff on Media Player or or um, QuickTime. Mm. Which is actually, I know we're getting off topic a bit, but that's part of the problem because now there's so many different codecs. Some are free, like XVID. Um, DivX are proprietary. You got your FLVs. You got FLA. Uh, you know WMVs. You got. Uh, there are still <laughs> real media, um, which there should never have been in the first place. But and QuickTime stuff. But that's the thing. There are so many formats now, and this is it's, it. Kind of gets ridiculous. Well, I've got a program on my Mac. It's called. If you go to Glenn, if you yeah. got, you're a Mac and uh, whoever's got a Mac that's listening to the show, yeah, it's a uh, go to the Mac App Store. It's called IVI. Yep. And if you, for example, you know how if you download a file from Google and it's always in Flash, it's FLV. Yeah. You drag it into this thing, and it will convert it, and it can be DivX, it can be anything. It'll convert it to MPEG three or MPEG-4 or M4A or whatever what you want. You want to play it on Apple or PC or whatever. Yeah, right, right. Um, and it'll just convert it and it'll just transfer it straight to your iTunes or just to a folder that you nominate and then you can mm. just play it on your um, on your Apple TV or whatever. So what I want to know is, uh, at the end of the day, what is going to happen over here in Germany? Like, uh, you can't imagine. What, so I, I guess they're going to be fine, but like, is, like, if they're going to be fine and this thing goes through, is Microsoft... A, okay, they'll, they'll pay it, right? So they'll, 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 they'll fork it up. But are they going to say, okay, well, we're not going to license it. So stuff is, we're just not going to sell, we're not just going to give his media player an Internet Explorer. Go jump. Well, oh, that's going to be mm. more well, of no, a it would only, problem. It would only be the proprietary formats within that. Well, so, they, they, the so they just block the, the usage of those, of those formats. I'm assuming that's what they're complaining. I mean, the, the the program itself, I can't imagine, is the issue. I'd imagine it's the codex. Yeah, true. But that's in, not that's not going to help that. anyone, is it? That's not helping anyone. No. That's... But, I mean, look what happened with MP3. The same thing happened. They basically said, look, this is a licensed codec. The thing's worldwide now. What do we do? Do we enforce our license? Or So they sort of put guidelines in saying if you sell more than X amount of thousand units, you pay for a licensing fee. You know, so they, they changed the guidelines because of this particular example. So it'll be just interesting to see how it turns out um, and more so what it's going to do for the rest mm. of the industry. But on the other side of the coin, I suppose, yes, if you were the inventor of this thing, you don't want to just see it just you know, just, just used, you know, like prostituted around the place for the gain yeah, of right. the gain of the big monopolistic companies. But anyway. Oh, you big communist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea. Jesus Christ. Who have you, you been listening? You've been in Bill Shorten's office during the week. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I've been watching his videos. I've been taking oh, lessons. Oh, dear. Yes, minister. <laughs> That's now, another story. Chewing the fat. Tune in. <laughs> now, Ikea goes green with a cardboard camera. There we go. Oh. You have to put it together yourself. <laughs> Having snapped no. 40 photos, users can dispose of it along with any other recyclable materials. The device is part of a dispose campaign. Dispose of it before I even use it. <laughs> around uh, IKEA's PS at Home project aimed at getting buyers to share images of their furniture on the website on their website. Called yep. Kanapa or Napa, K N A W P A. The camera. Knackered. <laughs> the camera will not be sold, but rather given away to consumers in selected stores around the world. Yeah, it was, it yep. Basically, the idea is you buy a bit of furniture, you take your pictures of how it looks in your house, you take it back to them, and they develop it and everything in, in store and give you a copy, and they use a copy for marketing. Can it, you so, um, and, take a picture of the leftover screws that you don't know where to put? <laughs> <laughs> it or was a screwdriver that you didn't get. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And why has my chair only got three legs? Well, it would be handy, especially if you bought the, uh, the house from Ikea. It'd be it'd be perfect for that because you could build your house. Um, you can pay your eighty six thousand oh dollars and get God. your flat pack DIY home. Oh my God! <laughs> um, yeah, it's I won't be buying than, that. It's probably more than a one day job, you know. You know what that but, is? That's uh, just two shipping containers put together. No, no, they're fully flat pack. They come literally on the back of a truck, uh, and it's all fully. You know, it's eighty six and a half thousand dollars, um, and it's. Quite modern. It's a hip and modern, apparently. Um, it's outfitted, taking into consideration the demands of Pacific Northwestern home, homeowners. And it's also designed to be eco-friendly. It has things like dual flush toilets and Energy Star electronics. Um, comes with a panda footrest as well. Um, oh, nice, nice. That doesn't look very big. That, How many bedrooms has he's got? Well, that's what I'm, I'm actually just scrolling down now. Um, there's the blueprints for it there. So oh, you can see it's it's 53 foot, 53 foot, um, long 14 foot wide so what's that 100 and what's that 20 20 meters 18 meters long and six 20 meters five, by meters five meters yeah thereabouts that's amazing so you can that's see it, it's basically got the kitchen dining at one end the living room uh a bedroom the bathroom and storage at the end um obviously it's designed so that you can actually add more of them together so if you wanted a two-bedroom home you would Click simply them. just tack on more of the bedroom to this one so you know so you could put another another house you could you could either put if i point this hey look i can do this <laughs> <laughs> no I... so you could either put like another plan it's like the weather <laughs> and is it going to be raining in brisbane tomorrow has that is uh... that got a few holes it leaks in that bedroom hot roof there <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> bit of humidity out of the bedroom <laughs> All right. No. Oh, there it is. Okay, thanks. <laughs> if you want to know what Will the hell was doing, and if you listen on the podcast, you'll have to watch the video. If anybody knows what I'm doing, send me an email and let me know. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't have a clue. <laughs> send him a rocket. Now, uh, Nintendo reports first annual loss. No, oh, the Wii sales oh, are cares. suffering. The company, they the company, wee, 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 all the way home. Yeah, the company wah, re- wah, wah. reported a net loss of <laughs> five hundred and thirty-three US million for the year. The company also been selling has also been selling its 3DS handheld devices below cost during the year, just to. That's um, always a good move. Thanks to a price cut, it was forced to make in response to intensifying competition in the sector. It hopes that its, its launch of a 2D version of Super Mario Brothers will help it out of its quan- quagmire. That's supposed to be a well, 3D version. Why did everyone version? think that? Oh God, we're we're in a bit of trouble here. Let's release a Super Mario game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no it one, works. everyone does it. Oh, it's the same reason they go, the movie studios go, oh, we haven't made anything for a while. Let's remake Batman. Or let's remake, you know, like oh, Dirty Super Dancing. Mario, and... really? So... I didn't like it in the 80s and I don't like it now. <laughs> neither did hey, I. They need... and neither do if I. They re... If they re-released Duck Hunt in 3D with the 22, I'm in. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd want Moon Patrol. Now, so, <laughs> some analysts... I just feel uncomfortable... Having someone who's a plumber with the moustache that big. <laughs> I thought You're he was comfortable. A... How do you think the princess feels? I thought he was yes, a pool cleaner. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I don't know what he is. <laughs> some analysts believe that competition. Oh, yes, I am still here. Uh, so some al- <laughs> some analysts believe that competition from online social networking games and smartphone apps is denting the console market irre- irrevocably. Do you reckon? 
The game's console market is declining altogether because mobile phone devices are allowing casual gamers to play much more easily wherever they happen uh, to be. Well, that is true. That is yes bad. and no, That's but I mean, a game that you play on the in your office during your lunch break or on the train isn't the same sort of game you're going to play on a console. It is if I you're mean, on a Wii. They're two different markets. Yeah, but the Wii games aren't as good as, for example, the Xbox games. What they've got to start doing is competing with Xbox. Mm. But they got making these these donkey little games that look like kindergarten. Donkey Kong. They need to improve their hardware for that to happen. And that's the thing. There supposedly is a new hardware console coming out. I think once once that happens, it might be it might be a yeah. Well, that's true. They've got to do that, and people will buy it. They will Hmm. buy it. You know, Hmm. PlayStation One, Two, and Three. I mean, they kept improving. I know they're not doing so well at the moment, but you know, up till. You know, when we first came out with their Wii system and everyone went crazy with the Wii, PlayStation mm. had it all over. It was, it was just Xbox and PlayStation. But the biggest problem is too, I mean, some, sometimes it's really weird because like the Sega had the, was it the Dreamcast was the least one they bought yeah. out. Yeah. And it was a fantastic system. I actually have one. The thing was brilliant. It had the handheld device was a separate gaming console. You yeah. would play mini games away yeah. from yeah. the console. Yeah. You'd come back and it became part of the game. Yeah. You know, that technology needs to be incorporated into whether it's a Wii or a PS4 or a Xbox 720 or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, if you have that, have an, an app for the, the phone or the pad or whatever device you have so when you're not playing the game you're playing it as a mini game and then when you come back it's added on top of your game i mean they're all online now anyway and Mm. i think something like that will will really help but they've got to do it yeah they just again they're a little bit their r d or their creativity or their forward thinking or lateral thinking or whatever you want to call it it's a little bit lacking and um, and no sooner has it was it announced on Aussie Tech Heads like as as far back as last week that Stephen <laughs> that Stephen Conroy, avid listener of the show, avid oh, avid God listener of the show, <laughs> loves Eric. By the way, I keep getting email about oh how he loves Eric. Yeah, but he's anyway, sending me love letters. <laughs> but uh, the the Australian Parliament has launched an inquiry into the pricing of the digital digitally distributed content. There we were talking about last week about. How it's not going to go anywhere. This is just twenty million dollars down the toilet. It's not going to go anywhere. No, because yeah, but listen to this. Listen, this, this is this is the this is the outcome. Okay, this is the outcome that is hoped for. This is the hoped outcome after hope. twenty million. Right, like everything they do, this Labor government, we just hope. Stephen Conroy hopes that the publicity generated by the inquiry will cause companies to better align the price of digital oh. content with markets such as the United States and Europe. The terms of do whatever they so, do, will please. So it's exactly like the, uh, the the fuel watchdog. They hope yes. that by mm. telling people fuel's expensive, fuel won't be expensive anymore. If we shame the petrol stations <laughs> because everyone knows, you know, yeah. but everyone knows it's expensive. You're not going to, you're better, they, what they're better off doing, because this is like a witch hunt. When you have an inquiry, it's a witch hunt. What yeah. they're better off doing is going direct to the company saying, hey, guys, can you explain, explain to us and can you give us a break, please? You know, yeah. be nice to them. Yeah. As soon as you have an inquiry, it's a witch hunt. As soon as you it's have like, a witch hunt, what are people? What are the companies going to do? They're going to get their back up. stick their middle finger up at you and go, right, that's it. We're going to put our prices up now just to piss you off. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, Julia Gillard today announced that they're cutting military funding, but they're going to spend two hundred and forty-five million on a on a scoping study. Million, on, yeah, a two hundred and forty-five million dollar study feasibility study yeah. as to whether a forty billion dollar Submarine should be built in Australia or overseas. Yeah. It's rubbish, isn't it? It's rubbish. Two hundred million dollars. Yep. The most expensive scoping study in the history of Federation. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, don't well, get me started. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> Boys, we're winding him up because you know what's coming up next. <laughs> We've put the crank in <laughs> and we've started to wind. All right, so that's about all we've got for you this week. I've so, got yes, oh, sorry, just one Will. quick story I just want to make people aware of. Um, finally, Facebook's actually useful. Um, Mark Zuckerberg <clears throat> added this himself. It's one of his pet projects. Uh, it's only available in the US and Britain at the moment, but basically what it is, it's a donor registry on Facebook. Um, 
firstly, it's to make your friends aware of, of organ donors and things like that. And also enables you to actually sign up online um, as part of the, if you're not already an organ donor, if you choose to be, then you can sign up through as part of the process as well. Um, so it will be, it will be, um, it will like be rolled out Facebook more later on. Private. I think I'd so, like to be a bit private. I don't, well, I mean, I don't want everyone knowing my organ. No, no, no. You don't. <laughs> you, you don't necessarily have to tell people if you're a donor or not. If you don't want people to know, but the thing is, you can sign up. You can sign up to say yes or no. You can keep that answer private if you want. But then the thing is, you share the link to let other people make other people sure. aware of it. I mean, sure. a lot of people aren't even aware that you can you can request to become an organ donor or not. They just think and, it happens, you know. So. <laughs> And these are Final. the stupid people. And but, these are the but, dumb people that we talk about every week. But does that, does that mean like the, the the AMBO, they have to what, check Facebook when they when you're laying there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's officially part of the register, so it'll go onto the back of your license, uh, it'll become up in your your medical records, things like that. So it actually I mean the Facebook side of it is purely publicity. Um, oh, of course it is. But it's raising awareness and it's one of the few stunts i guess you could call it although it's not really because it's it's actually properly properly implemented it's officially implemented but it's one of the few things they've done that i think is a really good idea if nothing else just to raise awareness of it regardless of whether you are or aren't mm. a, a donor because apparently so, even by putting the d on your the donor on your license that that still won't that's still not a, a you know com- complete deal You've got to actually register with the with the mob to be straight through. Um, it, putting your D on your license will enable you to be a donor if nobody objects. Um, you you if you want it to be non questionable, nothing they can do about it. Then you have to go further and mm. actually process. Yeah, put it in it your processed. will. Yeah, or get it put on record. Um, put it on your will. But yeah. Mm. But anyway, register at the donor thingy, whatever register they got, and put it in your will. That's right. And get cut open on the will, side will. of the road. <laughs> all right. So that's all. That's it. That's it. Eric, no more? No more. I hate communists. See you later. <laughs> finito. All right. And we're all finitoed. So we'll see you all next week for episode 289. So uh, as, much, as far as it goes for this week, thanks for all the emails this week. Thanks for everyone that's uh, sent things in. And don't forget, I've still, I've still got that CD to give away. Give that away. Someone's got to review something, audio or video. Where was that CD? Is it a CD of, uh, what is it, uh, like, um, what you call it? Um, Burt Reynolds' Burt Love Songs or something? No, it was no, Britney. It? She, no, she, she's in the news again, isn't she? Uh, Ray Hadley's Country <laughs> Music Songs or something? What who was that? Oh, Britney Spears. That's right. right. Before the head shave. Yeah. Look, it's got, it's got 16 songs on it. You won't have to torrent them. There we go. <laughs> Not for sale. All right, don't that's give me why, That's why I'm giving it away. <laughs> All right, so if you want to do that, just send me in a MP3 or a YouTube video or something of a review that you've done, and we'll, if we put it on the show, well, I'll send you that thing. So, all right, so thanks, everyone, and it's goodbye for now. We'll see you all next week. Ta-da. <laughs>